potentially right if we see him do it. Oh, here we go. Game number two of Boom versus Beast Coast. An incredible game one, but uh, Boom ends up coming out the victors there. Excited to see what game two is going to offer, though. I, I, there's some really cool heroes, some good ideas this game. I'm always happy to see a Slardar. So we'll see how they manage to uh, make it work. Yeah, curious how much commitment they're going to put to blocking Chen camps. It's something we see some teams do a lot. Other teams just don't care. Rubik's Part of the reason why Chen's dude. a little too strong right now because you can either play around the creeps or like, okay, I'll just use penitence, right? Uh, so, let's see how much he wants to commit. You're right, he is already back here. He's already back here. He's doing the classic four position. Like, I'm going to go get these small camps, guys. Don't worry. Knight sentries up the first one and we'll probably sentry up the other camp as well um, in the actual like triangle or not triangle but front side of the lane yeah he might wait till like the actual laning begins so yeah. that Chen can't just like preemptively unblock it either mm -hmm. uh, besides that didn't look like anything too crazy Alk playing it safe back here everyone else hugging the mid lane Okay, Tiny did get a nerf to tree grab or tree throw. I guess it's tree grab and then tree throw. Mm, I don't know like if that's really going to make a big enough difference. Reduced, right? Yeah, it's like six damage at level one. But, I mean, it's still still more than enough. Like, Tiny's base damage is still higher than Storm's, let alone with tree grab. So, I don't think it'll really change the dynamic in this particular mid matchup maybe in lanes where like the damage is closer it could yeah i i think for the most part like storm's still gonna see us okay as long as he uses the static remnant to secure the heat the last hits which looks like that's exactly what he's gonna do so yeah decent start to the lane here from Slatums. and lumpy not getting any denies on the first wave so that is rough for him Oh, okay. Yeah, Slayton's having a good start. So, mid lane will be a little back and forth, but for now, definitely going the way the storm. Well, unless he takes a bunch of tower shots, that'll do it. Lumpy. So, he needs to be careful. Remnants hurt quite a bit. So, both mid laners down to a very little of HP. I have a bottle coming out here soon on the Storm Spirit. It needs about 30 gold. Let's talk about this top lane. Illich is in really deep. The slow coming out from Penitence massively nerfed in this last patch, making such a huge difference. Um, uh, actually, just it's not even. It wasn't even changed. So it's the exact same. Level one Penitence. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah. They get the kill. First blood going the way of Moose. Uh, not to the troll warlord. Obviously, you'd much prefer it to be on the troll, but Chen's a hero that can definitely take advantage of it. For sure. Early mech. What a huge nerf to this hero. Holy heck. I'm just looking at Chen and it's like, wow. That's Strong such a massive... stage. Let's yeah. nerf the level four penitent. <laughs> 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 oh, Rubik going to lose his courier too. Is he going to get the salvan time? Oh, okay. At least he got his regen. So the thing I'm really looking for, yes, getting a kill already off to a good start. And then off of that, if Chen's able to rotate mid early, especially before Slatum's hit six, like Storm can't kill the creeps fast enough at the start. Like later on, he won't care, sure. But in the early game, it's a big problem for him. And I, I really think Mu should look to make his way over, at least at the power rune timing, like five and a half minutes you see him camping there. But I wouldn't even hate if he comes earlier. Yeah. Bottom lane, we haven't really talked about this one, the Slardar versus the Alchemist. Obviously, Slardar pretty dang good in a lot of these one uh, melee v melee matchups, especially strength heroes that don't typically have a lot of armor. That being said, Alchemist is not like the weakest lane hero like he used mm -hmm. to be, right? He does have Acid Spray, Unstable Concoction is a pretty decent amount of damage as well. And you have Crystal Maiden to back you up, so... He should be okay. I don't think Vitaly is going to be able to like snowball this lane in any capacity, but... If they manage to get the lane into a pretty good position, it can absolutely go the way of the Slardar. Yeah, Which right now looks both like Lotuses it is. too. Yeah. So yeah, here's the spot we might see a kill end up happening bottoms. Like, 
Slardar has pulled it back. Ooh, actually it ends up under the tower a little bit. We'll be pushing back shortly. Oss back in the mid lane. El Misho TP's in for this. Wait, El Misho didn't die storm. first? No, okay. Man. Yo, that's such a sick play. I think El Misho TP'd in for the toss back. That is pretty cool. Yeah, and I think with that, I mean, you're very happy. Storm going down first in this mid lane means Lumpy is going to get a pretty decent time to level 6. It's not, like, the same impact as, like, a level 6 Storm is going to have, but it does definitely impact some of that bonus damage. And also just getting that extra armor online early makes a big difference in terms of just the right-click harass. Yeah, the bigger thing is the Storm missing some XP, which mm -hmm. could gives a bigger window for Chen to rotate in and threaten the Storm's life by just running creeps at him. El Misho smokes. They're going to try to do it again. Well, top lane, Knight's the one in trouble, at least at the very moment, as a surprise. They will continue to just chase down the Rubik. Level 1 Penitence. Pretty good spell, it would appear. There's the Avalanche. Ooh, Lumpy actually misses the toss for the moment. They will get the toss anyway, as El Misho does hit him with Bushwhack. Both Panda coming in. Crystal Maiden kind of scary. Do not want to dive the tower too much. Love the attempt, but it does not work out this time. I mean, they might not be done. Okay, they are going to be done. Yeah, and it's time. Come on over. Come on over. Oh, RP creep, grab that. Come on over. He's like, which one do I want to get rid of? Which of my children do I hate the most? <laughs> Come on, grab him. Let's go to the mid lane. Storm, still five and a half. Get in there. All right, maybe he wants to prioritize giving Troll a good start. And, I mean, we saw what Troll can do last game, right? So it does make sense. Yeah, it does. Oh, Illich. Forced to skewer back. All right, it's fine. time. Let's go. Mid lane. Come on. They're not going to kill Troll. Look how low he is. Let's go. Ooh, it's a good read from Moose here on this D-Ward. Yeah, good use of the Courier. And he's here for the rune. I'm just going to pick up an Invis. Now that might get the storm killed off, but storm has two range creeps here. I believe he should hit six. Killing him just became a lot harder. Ooh, Tiny's going to come top with his invis, actually. So they are putting a lot of emphasis on Pike, giving him a good lane, get him to a strong battlefield timing. There's actually a sentry here, but not Ooh. enough time to react to it. Goodbye, knight. Moves with Moves the quick little the snipe. And he's like, oh, I'll take this one. Don't worry about it, guys. Lumpy's like, dude, I TP'd here, man. <laughs> this is a really sick play, too, as you Ooh, can just threaten the seven-minute rune. But, yeah, Lumpy actually walking into the creep wave there. Going to make it a little bit more difficult. So instead, they'll just turn their attention to the tower. And with Troll Warlord, as well as some Chen creeps, a catapult. Boss back? Yeah. Okay. Okay. They just forced well, him to cancel. That's the tower. Lumpy's like, bro, what are you even trying, man? Get out of here. I will say, this is space for Storm Spirit. You did just lose your top tower pretty early, but at least you still get the wisdom. Storm got some space to catch back up. Let's see what Storm can get done now that he's level 6. I mean, he's still relatively poor, still needs to like get a bit more, but I'm curious to see if he'll try to make a play or if he's just going to spend time farming to catch up. I think, honestly, Vitaly very happy about the bottom lane scenario now that he is level 6, so there is not really a way for the Alchemist to stay down here any longer. Mm -hmm. Alk, however, he can just jungle. He's got Acid Spray level 3, closing out on level Storm. Oh. oh my goodness. Very Alchemist close. Alchemist saved his life. Avalanche came out. If the toss plus an attack had come out, that would have killed Slatums. Instead, he, he gets he an Amplified Damage, damage. damage. He's kind of low, though. I don't know if he... Oh, he's going to TP bottom. Oh, he's going to go bottom. Okay. This, 
cool read. Uh, getting a kill here onto the starter would be massive. Ends up getting a lot of mana. The rotation from Panda okay. as well. They got him. This is very good read. Ends up going the way. I was worried. I, he didn't electric vortex under the tower. That scared me. But Panda was in position, so. Good and kill, here's good kill. Chen <laughs> doing what he does. Oh, you left your lane? Be good a shame we if I persuasion. took your tower. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, there goes that. So they have not quite made it to the Alchemist yet. So Alchemist has been farming, but they've cleared out the other two towers. And where do you think they're going next? It's Alchemist time. And now that those other towers are gone, if Alchemist tries to leave, it's like, I guess I'll go to the triangle. Hey, we feel perfectly comfortable invading that triangle now because both towers are down in that area. Mm -hmm. It's the nature of Chen. The boy has a Vlad's done nine minutes into the game. He's almost the same net worth as the enemy offlaner, and he's got his drums queued up. So, yep, yeah, kind of just par for the course with Chen. Very glad this hero was massively nerfed. Thank God, too. Man, He it would have been... Whew. Imagine if he Imagine. wasn't. <laughs> Vitaly just running at heroes, zoning them away from this tower. Let's see, how close is Lumpy to his blink? Because that's when they can really pop off. About a thousand gold still. Is Slaughter going the Orchid? He is, yeah. baby. Yeah. Let's go. I mean, that's just, that's the item, right? Like, there's no way you don't go Orchid this game. You're in a Storm Spirit and an Alchemist. Speaking of Storm Spirit, Moose. walks into a Chen, a Bushwhack comes through, a toss, and moves. What a TP to the top. Dude, this is such a sick TP. It is insane. And what if Define Favor could recall your entire army? Amazing place. <laughs> Penitence. Just like that. Can I another, grab kill. another kill. Nerfed Penitence, by the way. Thank God uh, it was nerfed. At the higher <laughs> levels, though. Still a level. Did you know that. Chen goes 1-4-1 one, one in most of his games. Did you know that they only nerf the abilities he puts one value point in? Crazy. And none of the items he buys was nerfed? <laughs> Radiant are scanning. What? Are you telling me this hero's <laughs> still good? I wouldn't believe yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, Divine Favor nerfed, but Divine Favor is just not the reason that his laning is a problem. So, it just, yeah. It's, uh, maybe next patch, maybe next patch. It, that was an to, to like divine fair. favor is an egregious ability already. So. Yeah, yeah. Chen was out of the meta for a while, so I guess we're giving him some time. Uh, so storm, the last pick, storm. Who's at risk? Okay, he's good. I mean. It just doesn't. It just doesn't pan out in any of the games we watch. I'm I'm sure it's got great games, but not on our streams, man. We are the curse of Storm Spirit, dude. I, I don't know. Like he's gonna get to his Witchblade, and then he's gonna just get blink orchided by a Slardar, and he's gonna be like, "Wait a minute, that's not fun." Speaking of blink daggers, hero. Lumpy looking to put his to good use here. And Storm Spear would be a lovely target, but they are reading this rotation fairly well. Lumpy. He wants the rune, but uh, Slatums will grab a shield rune. So that actually will spoil this kind of blink reveal from the tiny, but now you still just have to be careful all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And unfortunately for Storm, I mean, you'll take the power rune, but shield is probably one of the least preferred oh, ones. The Oh, dude, do you see this Battle Fury timing? 12 minutes, 25 seconds, the same as the Alchemist Radiance. I mean, that goes, that's, that's their game plan, right? We didn't see the Chen rotate mid like I thought, because they're like, Zach, you're dumb. The troll is clearly more important, and Lumpy will do it on his own, clearly. So, well, El Misho helped it, right? Let's awesome. credit to the supports. Uh, but they dedicate the Chen to help troll, and then Tiny even rotates up there, right? So... Troll is off to such a good start, and this alchemist who's like, oh, I hit timings faster by El Misho. I hit timings faster. They're like, do you though, troll? We've we've enabled him. He's barely behind. Like a thousand behind a tr uh, an alchemist is like nothing, right? And alchemist so. has been just free farming for the last like six, seven minutes. So mm -hmm. 
that is shocking. We're going to see a nice engagement. The turnaround here will be for Panda. No real chance of escape, obviously, as the Orchid is now done as well. And Thank God the only... Penitent Slow was nerfed. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine if it wasn't? Oh, jump forward. Avalanche. Orchid comes out. And uh, just a couple of slaps from the boys. Get themselves another kill. This is the exact scenario we saw yesterday where he had two blink mid laner, or a, a blink mid and a blink off lane running around with orchids uh, against the Storm Spear. And the hero had no game because Storm Spear is not a hero that can afford to go for a Yules against something like Slardar or a Tiny. Or like if he is, it just like misses the point of your storm pick, right? Which mm -hmm. is like, oh, he's going to be our initiator. It's like, oh, he has to build all defensive items. But that's, like, that's why we just keep seeing him fall flat. And I feel like you should just pick these more stable mids who can also flex off lane. Ooh, nice bushwhack. Yeah, that was very good. Crystal Maiden, I'm making out of there. She's like, guys, I think they have, like, just walks up there to D ward and is like, yeah, there's a ward. Lumpy, Lumpy with a under the tier two. He doesn't care. Does He's just going to get the toss back. Sends it over to the to the troll warlord. Great Ooh, RP, RP from Illich. That's a good reveal, but you still have battle trance. You have 20 wand charges. In comes the Storm Spear trying to get Fatali, but a great avalanche to buy some space. They will finally bring him down. I am honestly surprised they don't just commit under the tower and kill them, but the uh, fortification flak is a lot of damage. And that's how they threw last game, right? Yeah. So. Getting some flashbacks. Avalanche. Back, chill. Well, self's on the Alk, so. No back yeah, away. So, so that's kind of their saving grace right now, as Alchemist has been farming. He did some stacks. He's empowered by Magnus as well. So he is 2k up, not as much as you'd like on an Alchemist, but he will be strong. We're going to have to see them make some plays around him. Like, I hope to see a blink after this Manta, or maybe a BKB, like one of those. And I think you're going to have to, like, join some fights, because I. I don't think your other cores have a game if you do not help them pick up a kill or two. Yeah. Well, Chen has his drums, Vlad's completed. That's Roshan as they will walk right on in thanks to the corrosive haze. And they got plenty. Damn, of thank day. God Penitent's attack slow is nerfed at level one. <laughs> Otherwise, he'd be able to Rosh super early. <laughs> Well, this time you have a Slardar, so it would have happened anyways. Yeah. Man, this Chen's terrifying. Look at him. Vlad's drums. Same net worth as a Storm Spirit. Mid lane. Lumpy. Blank in. They're going to go for a Telekinesis here. A stolen Avalanche for Knight is amazing. But guess what? Here comes Bay. He's looking for his option. Bushwhack will catch the Storm Spirit. They don't know where the rest of these heroes are. But Storm Spirit will find an Arcane Rune on the bottom side. That is huge for him if he can put it to use. Dyer's middle tower has been denied. Smoked up. Storm goes in. That's an Orchid. Bushwhack connects as well. He needs to get out of here. Can he actually do it? Big RP from Illich. They get the kill. Storm Spirit now looking to go for more. Jumping in. You've got to be careful though, man. This Arcane Rune actually doing so much work because it sets up a stun here onto the Chen as well. In comes Pei though. He's so close to finishing off so many heroes, but he's got to be careful. Battle Trance is out. Alchemist just running away. And he guess what? The radiance, oh, Lord. Not looking very hot at the moment. Pro Panda ends up dying on the backside. A two for two. Off. Uh, off. Roll? Oh, dude, this whole avalanche actually owning. Knights is doing so much work. Lumpy realizing he has no help coming his way. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. All right. Pretty good fight. That's kind of what we needed to see from the Alchemist to join in. Uh, you get the Aegis too, so. They aren't able to use that to either just farm the whole time or pressure pressure different buildings. It's really close, though. That was a very close fight. Yeah. If Storm Spirit doesn't have Arcane Rune, obviously they don't take that fight. But he lived on just a sliver of HP multiple yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you can just see how much damage is going to start coming out from the side of Beast Coast, especially when Vitaly gets blink and you don't get to have these, like, initiations on Boom anymore. It's like he's the one who just, like, blink crush Orchid's a hero and then they die. Illich, looking for the Chen here. Uh, I got to give props to this Magnus. He's actually been finding so many great kills, and Chen is a powerful bounty. Prada? 
I don't know why I keep saying Prada. There's another player named Prada, but Panda gets sniped here. Good combination there from uh, Tiny and El Misho. Alchemist is going to get a blink next, so the aggression can continue. Slardar also pretty close to his blink, and that's pretty scary. Yeah. Yules is in the works for Storm, but uh, probably still going to need another minute or two to actually finish it. Outside of getting some kills, of course. It's like 900 gold away, right? Oh. Avalanche connects onto two. He needs some more help. Vitaly comes in. They get the Orchid onto the Rubik. The stun catches the Alp. A good bushwhack. He's going to self-stun. So this RP doing a lot of work just on its own. But can they bring down the Alk Manta to get him some space? Another refresh. But Lumpy, a great Avatos once again. And the physical damage. Just too much for him to deal with. Slardar. Just that counter you always got to be wary of as Crystal Maiden. Sitting at negative 10 armor at the moment. Not a good sign. <laughs> Any cord shot. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I mean, that was very close. Honestly, Illich nearly turning that engagement around. If the uh, Alk is able to like lay into the Sardar there when the RP comes out, I think the fight really goes their way. But just really sick plays from Tiny, honestly, going in and out of the fight. Mm -hmm. yeah, multiple blinks are uh, coming online here soon with the Alchemist and the the Slardar. So I'm curious to see like who gets the most benefit from it coming up here. Like who can find the next pickoff? Because we are at that point in the game where kills are mattering a bit more because uh, the death timers are going up. Everyone's worth a little more. So if you manage to find like the initiation first. Maybe that booms way back into this. Saving that regen rune for Slatums. Right, both blinks on the way. Let's see if teams smoke up. Or maybe they're just going to get the Tormentors. Uh, who's got a good shard? Ends is I mean, like, N. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, there it is. All right. Ancient Creeps. Here we go. I mean, he's got double Seder, which is cool. He's got the troll. He'll probably keep the troll, but now... The levels uh, go up, too. Yeah, it's like getting extra levels for all of these heroes. Is, or heroes for all these creeps is massive. They're practically heroes. Under yeah. Chen, they're heroes. Yeah. He's just sit, gonna sit here and wait. He's like, I, I need my Nick, my first ancient creep. And my backfire <laughs> is his team's getting initiated on bottom. Right? They're looking to go for the troll warlord. And boy, do they have them. Everything dumped on top of them. You still got RP as we're now chasing for El Misho. Slate him. Sets up some pretty good engagements here. That should be two kills. Stolen Bushwhack as well. Troll just finishes his BKB. Like, well, that would have been nice uh, 10 seconds ago. Good find. I mean, that's the Alchemist Blink being able to join in. Chain stun that. So they're definitely on the winning end of that because I don't think Slardar's Blink has done anything yet. It's a great find. It's 3k up for Beast Coast. Not huge. It is into an Alchemist lineup, though, so maybe a little bit more meaningful than it looks like. But fortunately for their draft, Storm is primarily the initiator for now, and so is Magnus, and the Alk is farmed. So as long as you find good initiations and Alk is allowed to attack, uh, you're going to be pretty happy. He's going to go smoke, for an AC next. I thought he might get a BKB, oh. but... They... He just got so lucky. He sees that the rune's not top and immediately zips bottom without even realizing a smoked tiny is ready to kill him. All right, well, what are we waiting for on Boom? Because Slatums, he has his Yules, which is good, like you've talked about. Illich has Harpoon. Are you just, like, afraid to fight heads up into the Chen? I imagine you are. Wondering that myself. Maybe level 18 plus AC on the Alchemist. And then oh, the okay, Shard goes that. to... 
Crystal Maiden. Okay, you know what? That's actually a huge shard this game because of the Chen creeps uh, and the kiting potential on these cores who are all melee and just kind of have to run at you. I mean, they blink first, but then they run at you. So uh, maybe recognizing, yeah, there's a good chance we get the Crystal Maiden shard if we do this. I mean, that actually is really strong. So maybe we'll see them do something coming up here soon. How much money off from the AC? Not a lot. Right, he'll have it really soon here. Yeah, that's like two, well, one creep camp to an alchemist, basically. Um, very nice little pick off onto Panda. I mean, it's like there's not much you can do as a crystal bait in this game. If Tiny finds you, you're you're just dead. Um, they're gonna smoke up with that kill and see if they can maybe find something else. Mid lane, the 24 minute power rune will be top. And I think Storm knows. He's like, I'm not zipping for that one. No way. Vitaly, though, with this blink, they actually get the scan. They see Alk. Lumpy. Oh, no. Dodging death there. That is incredibly close. I'm, supply I'm surprised he didn't just blink into the ancient camp there. Mm hmm. Whoa, what is this? Alchemist has a Shiva's queued up. Uh, More armor, I guess? And, like, the healing reduction from Chen? But, like, why wouldn't you just go a Scotty if you want healing reduction? It's just AoE healing reduction? I don't know. Uh, a lot of times we see people like late game go away from this like magic radiance build as well and they disassemble into things like nullifier which mm -hmm. is a very good item against a troll warlord um but uh yeah that's that's wild panda i don't know how to just use crystal clone and they're like oh he's here somewhere avalanche toss a couple auto attacks he's gonna go down Yeah, I'm very curious about that. We'll we'll see how it comes into play. He's going to be pretty hard to kill with that. And I guess he's got the Magnus in power so that his he's not like missing as much damage as if he like did this without the Magnus, but Roshan number 2. I don't I don't think I understand it. Hmm. That Roche did not live very long, I'll be honest. Aegis and Cheese, Don't cheese, cheese. and Vitaly's like, okay, I'll take it, whatever, that's fine. Uh, TP to the bottom lane, Troll wants to continue farming, and don't really blame him. Looking for an Aghanim Scepter. I don't know if that's as necessary this game as it was last game, right? Because you're against like a Sven, you want to be able to remove the Warcry. Also, being able to dispel things like Frostbite and Crystal Clone comes to mind this game again, so... Maybe it's worth it just for that. You can move the Fade Bolt damage reduction from himself, and you can actually dispel the enemy in power. So that's like a pretty big oh, swing attack damage point. if you like combine that. So I kind of like yeah. it. Lower cooldowns too means more uptime on the evasion, which I mean, it's literally at 75% uptime. So that's pretty good. Yeah, and Alka's not getting an MKB. He's uh. He hasn't spent his money yet, but it's still on the Shivas. Okay, it's there's Shivas. that second plate. I mean, he is very high armor. This is 74% damage reduction for physical damage, anyways. Uh, with the Dragon Scale, the AC, second plate mail, Yasha in the Manta style. I mean, there was this like a tank. Ahead, tankiest sorry. Alk I've ever seen, is all I was going to say. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if Troll ends up caring about armor late game, because you eventually win. Right, like he will get a basher, he'll get an MKB, and he will just sit on your hero and kill them, and there's nothing you can do about it. No matter, no amount of armor will save you. Except like the Omni ult that provides 9,999 armor. That one will save you. But outside of that, no amount of armor will save you. Ooh, Blink Harpoon. Very nice grab in the mid lane. Good RP as well to follow it up. Slade him's incredibly low, but 
Good freezing field from Panda. The fact that these guys are still alive and Lumpy is just at half HP. Troll Warlord, he's going to get caught from the Frostbite. The Crystal Clone as well. Twice. Trying to get away. It works for now, but Vitaly's looking for his entry. Can't believe Dude, no one died. How did they not die? That's RP down. Freezing field down. Oh, oh another Harpoon. Good Yules. Can he keep himself in this one? They get moves. The Hand of God expanded pay here with his BKB just laying into the Magnus. Finally does the job, but Alk, he self-stuns, I think. He needs to be very careful. Okay, he still has his Battle Trance, still has his BKB. Vitaly just goes in a super deep here onto the backside. Gets massively punished. I feel like I have to look at that fight again later because I am so confused how, first of all, didn't work. Then gets Harpoon skewered again in that same spot, even though you know it happened last time. And then Alk self-stunned, but they, his team still cleaned up. I guess it did require a buyback. And now they're going to find Troll. Oh, the Harpoon. That being said, skewers. he has Battle Trance. Yeah, I was like, I don't think he cares. He's got that Battle Trance still going. And, well, now it's going to cost you another death. They also managed to find a solo kill onto the Rubik and a Sharpshooter to finish off Panda. And Lumpy... Never satisfied. He's always looking for more. Because originally in that fight, Beast Coast was not all together. And I thought it was a bit of a mistake that they were doing three separate things. Pushing the bottom tier two, positioning in that mid lane where, where they got harpooned. And then Vitaly was trying to finish his BKB like back in their Ancients. So I guess that fight kind of went as expected. But now they overcommitted and it's gone the other way. And we're kind of back to where we were prior to a bit of a throw. Yeah, you also have Time Warp Aura now for the Chen, level 3 with this creep, so 12% cooldown reduction for everybody. Absolutely massive. As he also has a Thunder Hide, plus this Solar Crest, so he's able to just give this troll so much attack speed whenever he needs. Uh, still has his Aegis for 50 seconds, BKB available, no Battle Transfer couple, but... Avalanche toss out from Lumpy, pulls in Panda. That's a nice kill. Panda lives a lot longer than I thought, actually. Yeah. So, they managed to get something with the Aegis, and they'll back away. A really clean play here from Beast Coast, as they're now 6,000 gold ahead. And uh, boy, oh boy, Chen, so farmed. About to pass the... Uh, he's already passed the Magnus. It's only a matter of time before he passes the Storm's Beard as well, it feels like. And Elmisho's not under farmed either, right? Like, he has a Yules and a Rod of Atos. Yeah, though, this is probably one of the poorest Hoodwink games we've seen in a while. Uh, usually they're like super farmed at this point. I mean, that just means he's got that scaling potential. Smoked up. They see the Alk Illusions, they know he sent them from up here. Come They're gonna walk right here. into it. Who's gonna get the scene first? Nice blink out from Illich, but Slardar tries to come miss in, gets the, the Orchid. He does miss the stun, and Storm's gonna go and finds El Misho on Huge the backside as well. Papaz are just, just destroying moves. The RP making space. They do trade one for one. A nice harpoon and a good skewer back, but the fights are happening at two different time zones. They need to get Pacaz. That's the big ticket, but Vitaly stuck all alone inside the base, and now looking like he will go down. A big win here from Boom. Just separating Beast Coast exceptionally well. That RP screwed them over. They... I think Magnus should have died without doing anything. The The first blink out was great on him, but it should have led the second blink to land the stun. I guess maybe it had to be a bit of a guess since they didn't quite see him, but because of that RP on all three core heroes who were rushing to try to kill him... And your backline gets cleaned up in the meantime. This seems yeah, to be huge. Beast Coast's uh, struggle this series. Their, their mid to late game fights are not as clean as they should be. Now there's an amplified damage on Alchemist. Getting to work on this tower. Does not have the most right click damage, I would say. I mean, with the amplified damage, yes. But this build means his right click is not as scary as uh, some wanna, other alchemist. They want to force something here. And I feel like you kind of need to. Like, 
you are definitely what seems like the stronger team on Beast Coast. Your Troll Warlord is enormous, and he does have his Ags coming out at this very second, so that will help. His MKB was done in the last fight, but he never really got a chance to stick on a target. Like, they were able to kite him out very well. And Overwhelming Blink finished up on Pekaz at the same time. So far, it's the Magnus who has been huge, creating tons of problems for Beast Coast. Yeah, finding Illich so many harpoon. Game. Yeah, he keeps finding harpoon skewers and like big blink RPs. They do have a good ward here in the base. I'm sure Knight's gonna eventually probably de ward this, but. Giving them some decent vision to play around. They kind of know what's up. They see the three cores in there. They know. All right. They're not willing to really go too far outside of the base. Storm Spirit will be pushing top. We'll have to come back to deal with this. Looking for Storm. All right. Amisha is like, I'm done playing nice. I'm going Gleipnir. I tried this supporting stuff. Not for me. I mean, the extra catch from Gleipnir will be really nice. Yeah. Magnus does not have a BKB yet. So if you can root him, he's going to be forced to use Yules, which means you can then hit him with the Orchid. I mean, they're smoked up here on the side of Boom. They, they've they got some decent... Uh... Oh, Misha's going to get caught out first. Oh, he pops the smoke. There's going to be the harpoon into the skewer back. And that is a great way to start a good avalanche onto two. But Pakaz just destroys the Chen on the backside. I guess Shiva's, you can't get away from him, I suppose. That's kind of the idea, it would seem. All right, well... While they commit for the Tormentor, they manage to uh, get some pickoffs. And Boom's looking stronger and stronger. Next Roche might decide a lot here, uh, as it is third Roche really fast, of course, because of the Chen and the uh, Slardar, and the fact that Roche 2 spawned very fast as well. So 35 minutes, third Roche is up. Three Agonims for... I don't know, he, I mean, Magnus having a great game. You could give him Horn Toss, or you could put it on Storm for the huge Electric Vortex. I think I actually, I, I'm a big fan if you have an Alchemist team, putting the Roshan Ags on the Alk so that he can just, like, not have to buy himself one and just start dumping the gold into his allies. But, yeah, I think if you want to be able to play earlier, I think Storm Spirit Ags is enormous this game. Same with Horn Toss. They're both really good. Let's see if they even get it, because it looks like they didn't feel Jen's comfortable positioning around there. They might just the, run in and with Chen and so Slardar. Fast. Yeah, you need to be like heading over now. If they can silence it so it doesn't get the roar off, but it's oh my roar. God. it just doesn't even matter. Oh my lord. Oh, Ag's now for Tiny. Uh, so he has a little bit more scaling now with that tree volley. I'm surprised. I kind of thought you might give it to the Slardar. I feel like Slardar's Ags is incredibly good. Because um, I feel like he's going to be one that does kind of scale better than Tiny this game. But... Troll. Walking oh, through. They have point. plenty of vision seeing him here, but... He's Since got he's the like Aegis. Him. Oh, they find the, the Slardar. That's big. And the Vortex to follow it up. The RP's there as well. What a great find. They just take down two. And El Misha on the backside. He's going to be number three. It's just a matter of time. Yep, finished off by Pakaz. Is now Troll Warlord completely taken out of this fight. Another skewer will pull moves up into the hands of Boom Esports. Three heroes dead. Troll trying to just get away at this point. He's forced to BKB TP. But you find Tiny as well. Lumpy, no escape. What a setup from Boom here. That is absolutely wild. I mean, Magnus, look at the ward man. vision here. You just see everything. Yeah, they were very, very ready for that. They found everything they needed to. 
which was uh, pretty cool. Like that was technically a five on five, but I don't know. Maybe not expecting Boom to be positioned on this high ground. They were a little scattered. So uh, Troll and I think it was time. Oh, Troll and Slardar got caught. RP. Yeah. Everyone has to like run in to help, but they're like not in position because it is. I mean, it's essentially they have to go high ground, right? So they're like the terrain's not helping them out. Dude, Illich has played an incredible game on this Magnus. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that he recognizes, I don't want Troll, but gets the the Harpoon turnaround skewer and then pulls both Troll and the Slardar in for the two-hero RP is just absolutely wild. Like, he's had such an incredible game. All right. Level 25 on the Troll Warlord now, though, so... Stunning him down is not going to be enough. Alchemist Ooh, gets the blink out. Okay. I mean, they had the ward, I guess, so he knew. He's sticking around just a little bit too long, but all right. He's out. It blows my mind that despite all of these last several fights going the way of Boom, Beast Coast are still slightly ahead. Obviously, the, the free ags from Roche makes a big difference, but... Mm -hmm. This is like an Alchemist team that just has had no gold advantage an entire game. Like, literally the entire game. They have not had the gold advantage. Yeah, picking up more towers, and I think they had more map control to start, along with every single Roche, kind of leading to this point. But, yeah, extremely even game. I'm trying to... Is there... Like, how do you deal with this Magnus? Is it just you have to find him? Because so far, every single one of these fights is determined by the Magnus. I think you have to dangle the troll now is basically it, right? Like he has Battle Trance hard dispel or strong dispel, right? There's no silences uh, on the Radiant. So you actually just dangle. Oh, I guess you have a Hex. Well, you do have, you have a Scythe now on the Storm Spirit. So you could kill him with that. Um, if you don't kill him in the Scythe, he just Battle Trances, BKBs, and then you can maybe turn the fight. But you have to wait for the Magnus, for sure. It's kind of a scenario where I think Magnus and Slardar are playing the same game. Like, who's going to find who? Mm -hmm. So far, it's been much easier for Slar uh, for Magnus as he also finishes up a Wind Waker and has a Timeless Relic. Amazing pickup for him. Now, if he does get picked off, he bought out for this. And Troll, Chen, they could take your base. So... Are they going? I think they're See just going to go. Well, again, he has the Wind Waker. Scott Wind Waker. Needs to be careful, though. Storm's just going to go right in onto the backside. He's lost a lot of his mana for this already. Trying to get away. Storm. Going to be fine. Beast Coast hesitant to engage here. I'm a little surprised. I thought this was your opening. And Harpoon. Doesn't quite get him on the skewer. Ooh, Alchemist also has a Wind Waker, actually. What an interesting Alk build, but it's it's really working out for them. Level 25 gets his movement speed. Combine that with the Wind Waker, he's actually not that slow. No no boots necessary. Now it's time for him to start buying those uh, Aghanim Scepters. As his build isn't going to really change at this point, it is kind of just... It's going to be way more useful to get an Ags to your Storm Spirit, who now has this Scythe and is almost to a Parasma, right? Like, these are some massive items for him. We're going to see them come into the high ground. Vitaly gets caught from the Hex. The jump in from Alchemist. Goodbye. And he steals Corrosive Haze. Lumpy BKB. He actually has no TP. He's going to be able to take oh down God, the Ags. Almost, but saved barely by the Solar Crest out from Panda. What a save. Well, just like that, two massive kills. No buyback on the Slardar. Dude, I think we're going to see a Storm last pick win, man. For the first time? Couldn't be. I think he's done it. Into a Could Chen, you have done this dude. with a different hero? Uh... Well, I won't get ahead of ourselves yet. We'll think about that later. They still have to close out this game, which they have yet to go high ground. They're coming up now. Tiniest buyback. Slardar's almost up. He immediately BKBs. If he could get to the Alcar, it'd be amazing. Waker. But that Wind Waker playing, 
playing a big role is I mean no BKB troll now. His battle trance is borderline useless. Yeah, you're gonna feel really strong now. They're gonna force this hard. I don't think Tiny's gonna buy back at this point. They might fortify one more time. Yep. Did lose one set here. Oh, tr uh, ten is ratting bottom. What in the world? Okay. Classic Chen. Good thing this was nerfed. Yeah, they'll have to bring back the storm. They get themselves the lane of barracks, and just like that, boom, take their first net worth advantage of the game. Coming back from what was the largest net worth advantage of the game for for Beast Coast, right? They were eight thousand ahead, now six thousand behind. Troll Warlord does get a mind breaker, but they've caught the Chen trying to go for the D ward. He goes for the hand of God. He gets the kill, but a huge bushwhack. Can he actually stick on the targets? He can't, dude. The Wind Wakers are just a massive problem. The immediate Hex comes through. He still has the Battle Trance to play with. Yules? Avalanche doesn't connect, but the RP does. Can he hold his ground? He's trying. He's waiting. Battle Trance turns it on. He gets to the Alchemist. He does have the Wind Waker for the moment. It's buying him a little bit of space. Panda with a nice freezing field, but Alk is out. The, the Crush misses. He's dead without buyback. El Misho's dead as well. Chen will be next. This game is over, man. Beast Coast getting absolutely outplayed in these fights. Yeah, what a cool Alk build. I, I don't even know. I Maybe a regular build would have worked too with the way Illich is playing. Just endlessly catching the right heroes. Never a straightforward fight from Beast Coast, which I think does a little bit of their own positioning with them splitting up. But even when they're together, Illich breaks them apart. Yeah, they're, they're not even going to go for the Megas. They're straight to the throne. You got two buybacks. Going to have to commit them here, but nah, they're just going to GGO. Toss into the fountain, I guess. They found Slaughter as well. That's your that's a death. Yeah, it's this one's GG. There's this build oh, from he's bringing himself to the fountain. Is honestly one of the sickest builds I've seen in a long time. He's taking a lot of damage here from the oh fountain. Oh my god. But Manta <laughs> will keep him alive and the rest of the team here to help secure the victory. And just like that, GG comes out. A disconnect at the same time, but boom will take the series 2-0. I have to say I mean, I talked about Picaz earlier. He is one of the best carries in the world. He really is. Like, he is severely underrated, I think, from the world's view. I think people who follow South American Dota know Picaz is a god tier carry. To go for this build on Alchemist is absurd. I don't know.